What's up guys, Peter here from Reviews on Anything and in this video we're having a look at the Nexus 5X. Now we'll start with the Huawei MediaPad X2 which is my daily driver, my, the phone that I use every day. Uh, it's a whopping 7 inches big which obviously comes with a lot of benefits, uh, big screen, big battery, uh, very good usability but it also comes with a lot of drawbacks. Uh, pocketability for example as you can imagine is an issue. Uh, luckily for me, LG has been in touch and asked me to review the Nexus 5X, which is a 5 inch phone, uh, so a lot smaller, uh, but a lot more practical in everyday use, you might think. And phones have gotten bigger and bigger over the years. I can imagine uh, the original Dell Streak that I owned was a 5 inch phone and it was huge for the time, and now this is sort of the standard these days. Um, so we're going to make a comparison here um, if a 5 inch phone is as good as a 7 inch phone. And of course, we're going to have a close look at the Nexus 5X by itself. All right, so here we are with the LG Nexus 5X. Uh, clearly, there is no mistake about what it is. It's a Nexus phone, which means you get the latest and greatest from Google directly, the latest and greatest Android software. Um, this is going to be a pretty uh, straightforward review. We're not going to look at the software because, uh, you know, it's Android 6.0 out of the box. And depending on when you watch this video, that will be updated. Uh, and of course, what you need to know about the Nexus line is what you probably do know, uh, that you get updated. You're first in line for updates, uh, so you always have the latest and greatest, which is very nice. Now, the original Nexus 5 uh, was a bit of a, you know, a bit of a bombshell even. Um, it was a flagship phone for a very affordable price. Not so much with this one, though. Um, it's around 400 bucks when it came out. I'm sure you can get better deals now because it's, you know, a few months old. Uh, but it's definitely not a flagship phone anymore. Instead, it's sort of a mid to high mid-range phone uh, for, you know, an affordable price. It's certainly not the six, seven, eight hundred euros you can spend on uh, like a fully specced out Galaxy S7, for example, these days. Uh, but it's also not a, you know, a very budget phone anymore. Uh, so what are we working with here? Now, first of all, um, the design is very clean. I like it. It's, um, you know, all phones look alike these days. Uh, but it uh, has a soft touch back, which as you can see attracts quite a bit of sweaty hands. Um, the sides are pretty straight, but also feel sort of softish. There's no metal, it's all plastic. Uh, you can be very sad about that, but obviously it keeps the price down. Uh, so I think that's a good thing. And in this case, uh, you know, they've done a good job in making the phone, even though it's all plastic, feel nice in the hand. The edges are not sharp, but also not slippery. Uh, the side is grippy. Uh, but still smooth and you know it's overall very nice phone to hold in the hand you can see that it fits very nicely um, in my hand especially when you compare it to my Huawei iPhone which you know doesn't fit in hand at all and god forbid you need to reach to the other side of the screen with your thumb that's not gonna happen and if you do it here obviously much better now we're working with a 5 inch screen here at only 1080p only because uh, obviously it's not 4k or anything uh, but because it's uh, 1080p uh, on such a small area you're still talking 423 pixels per inch which is very good uh, for a phone this uh, in this price range and this size 423 is excellent it's an LCD screen um, which has an effect on colors and saturation and so on uh, but in real life you're not going to notice any of that uh, unless you put it next to an OLED screen or five, a 4k screen or anything uh, LCD will get you along just fine. Good viewing angles in general. Uh, you can see it reasonably well outside. Uh, indoors, obviously, no problems at all. Five inch phone means, um, you know, not too much battery inside. 2,700 milliamps, which will, uh, you know, with the latest um, Android 6.0 updates, um, the battery saving modes and everything in there, uh, which will get you easily through a day of normal use. Uh, as soon as you start, you know, gaming for hours on end, uh, constantly checking all kinds of feeds, having the screen of full brightness. Yes, obviously the 2700 milliamp hours are gonna suffer and not make you make it through the day. But for normal use, you know, checking your Facebook, checking your Twitter, uh, sending some messages, making a few phone calls, all is well here. Obviously, charging is a big thing here because this has USB-C, uh, which you can be very like, oh, you know, I have to change all my adapters, blah, blah, blah. On the other hand, it provides rapid charging, uh, which is a good thing, and USB-C is clearly the future. So, you know, uh, you have a phone 
With USB-C, you don't really have to you know, change your cables because obviously you get the cable included uh, and all is well. And in a couple of years, uh, you know, USB-C will be as widespread as normal mini USB uh, at the moment, or micro USB rather. Uh, so, you know, you'll be one of the first to have it and uh, it's not that much of an issue, I find. Now, there's no wireless charging involved. Again, uh, it is to keep the price down. Uh, you can again be very sad about that if you're really into wireless charging, but then you know you know that beforehand before you buy it So if that's something you're really into this is not the phone for you uh, But you know, that's uh, that's the way it is I don't really think it's a problem because uh, you know I don't really see wireless charging as such a convenience that you need to have that in the phone and with the quick charging I use we see you get uh, you know three to four hours of use of the phone uh, with a 10-15 minute uh, charging time, so that's good work in my book now, inside you get the Snapdragon 808, 2GB of RAM, and uh, on the back you get the same camera as its big brother, the Nexus 6P. You also get uh, pretty much the same fingerprint scanner, uh, which is very nicely located for your index finger here. Uh, works with both hands. Obviously, uh, you have to set it up properly, uh, but once it does, uh, when it, once it is set up, it works very fast to unlock the phone. Uh, and it's in a nice position as well. You can imagine when you hold your phone like this, it can be a bit awkward to go for you know, a power button here on the bottom where the fingerprint scanner is. Uh, I think this is a very natural spot for the scanner. The camera, um, like I said, same unit as in the 6P. It does stick out a bit. Hopefully you can see that properly on camera. It's a bit of a camera hump. It doesn't really, you know, makes the phone slightly unstable uh, when you lay it flat on the table, but who types like this anyway, so I don't really see the problem there. And it takes uh, good pictures, it's a 12.3 megapixel unit, uh, which is more than plenty and the picture quality is uh, pretty good. And since uh, Google will give you the latest camera updates all the time, you'll be good there as well. Um, that's all there is to say really about the phone. Um, the buttons here on the side, volume button, power button, are reasonably uh, clicky. They're a bit shallow, uh, but it works pretty well in general. Uh, and that's yeah, really the phone in a nutshell. Um, really to conclude this phone, uh, to sum it up, uh, you have to think about uh, the Volkswagen Golf. That was the first thing that came to mind uh, to me. It doesn't really stand out anywhere. It doesn't really excel uh, in any area. Uh, but it does everything well. And by doing everything well, from the design, to the hardware, uh, to the soft touch, to the processor, to the uh, screen to the battery and everything it does everything well and if you put all that together you end up with a very very good all-round phone this is a phone you can pick up any day of the week and be very very happy with it will do anything uh, really you throw at it uh, anything from gaming messaging uh, typing whatsapping facebooking you know it it'll do it and it'll do it all day um, but you don't expect miracles from it you don't take a standard Volkswagen Golf to the racetrack because uh, there it will obviously suffer. Uh, same thing with this, if you, if you want to watch 4K movies, if you do you know, high demand streaming, gaming, multiplayer, whatever kind of action, yes, you know, the 808 Snapdragon might not be able to pull it, um, the screen might not be big enough for you, uh, the graphics uh, on a 1080, you know, it's, it's always not going to be as good as a full-on flagship phone, which costs twice as much. And I think for the money, you get a great all-rounder that does everything you want it to do. Uh, so for people that don't need the absolute latest and greatest in specs, in chipsets and in graphic cards and screen performance, this is the phone for you. You can, you know, think of, you don't even have to think about it, you can pick this up and know you're going to be happy with it. Would I pick it over my Huawei MediaPad X2? It's a good question. Um, on the one hand, uh, the practicality of having a smaller phone is great. Um, it fits everywhere, uh, it lasts long enough. And this has a 1080p screen as well, so you know, no, not much difference there. But personally, I'm somebody who doesn't make a lot of phone calls, uh, and I spend a lot of time with the screen. Uh, so for me, the screen is what matters. Uh, messaging, Facebooking, uh, Instagramming, everything happens on the screen, and I don't really spend so much time calling. Uh, so I don't have the phone, you know, up close to my face all day long. Uh, and in that case, I think the bigger phone still works better for me because I can actually be productive on it. I can see more and do more on the bigger screen and that just works better than the smaller screen here. Um, so for me, it's still the bigger one, uh, but obviously the benefits of having a smaller phone are pretty big. 
uh, for most people. So all in all, I think the Nexus 5X is a very worthy successor uh, to the original Nexus 5. It's not the same, it's a different category, it's a different niche uh, that they're aiming for. It's not the budget's uh, flagship killer anymore, but it's uh, a great all-rounder and I think for the price you're doing uh, pretty well. You get a very nicely made, well-rounded phone that does everything you want it to do. This is Peter from Reviews on Anything with a look at the Nexus 5X from LG. Thank you LG for sending us this review unit. We really enjoyed the test. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!